Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by the Hamlet's Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to get into the sun's path. Before we get started, by now you understand that the sun is going to be the main star in our solar system. Everything revolves around the sun. Here on Earth, the sun's going to rise in the east and set in the west based upon the Earth's counterclockwise rotation. The sun is going to emit energy called insulation. Insulation stands for incoming solar radiation, and essentially it's going to be the sun's energy. There's a couple factors that are going to influence the sun's energy. First is the angle of insulation. The higher the angle, the greater is the sun's energy. Lower the angle, the less the sun's energy. The greatest angle you can get is 90 degrees. Lowest angle of insulation is 0 degrees. This is a major factor that's going to influence the course of the day, it's also going to influence our seasons as well. Duration of insulation. Basically how long the sun is out for. Summertime in New York State, sun's going to be out for about 15 hours. Wintertime in New York State, it's only going to be out for about 9. Much warmer in the summer, very simply because angle's a little bit higher and it's out for a longer period of time. The latitude it strikes. North Pole and South Pole are cold. Equator is very warm. And the reason for that, the angle of insulation it's going to strike the North Pole and South Pole very indirectly. It's going to strike the equator very directly. The more direct the sun, the greater the temperature. Latitude's going to be a major factor in this. And the intensity. Intensity is the strength. Now the strength is going to be directly dependent upon the angle itself. Lower the angle, lower the intensity. Higher the angle, the greater the intensity. In this little animation here, you'll see the sun's rays striking the North Pole, the equator, and the South Pole. You'll notice that the sun's energy is exactly the same width. But when it strikes the surface, because we have a spherical planet, it's going to strike the North Pole and it's going to spread out. And you notice how wide the sun's energy is at the North Pole. The wider the energy, the less concentrated it's going to be, the colder it's going to get. You notice that angle is not going to be as nearly direct as the equator. The equator in this picture is going to be hit at about 90 degrees. The higher the angle, the greater the temperature. That's why the equator is warm and the North Pole and South Pole are quite cold. You can even influence over the course of the day. You see here at noontime, the sun's going to be pretty much overhead. Okay, in this case, probably going to be at the zenith, which we'll get to a little bit later on, but you'll notice that the sun's rays are very direct. The more the sun is going to rise or the more the sun's going to set, you'll see that the angle is going to change. The lower the angle, the more spread out the sun's energy is, the lower the temperature. So sunrise and sunset are going to be quite cool. Okay, your afternoon time is going to be a little bit warmer because the sun is going to be a little bit more direct in relation to the sun's energy. All right, so you have a couple important dates here. Summer solstice. That is your first day of summer. It occurs on June 21st. March 21st and September 23rd. That is your vernal equinox and your autumnal equinox. That is the first day of spring and the first day of fall. We also have the winter solstice, which is December 21st. That's going to be our first day of winter. Now, the thing is, there's a couple latitudes that are going to be influenced by these dates. So on June 21st, 23 and a half degrees north, the sun is going to be at the zenith. Basically what the zenith is, it's going to be the point directly above you. It's going to be the point where the sun is going to give you the greatest angle of insulation on the planet. So on June 21st, Tropic of Cancer is going to get the most direct sun on that day. The zenith is going to be 90 degrees above you. The sun's energy is going to be 90 degrees above you on that date. March 21st and September 23rd, again, those are going to be the two equinoxes. The sun is going to be at the zenith at the equator. It's going to be 90 degrees above you, okay, producing the greatest angle of insulation. And during the winter solstice, December 21st, that is going to be the southern hemisphere summertime. So 23 and a half degrees south, the Tropic of Capricorn is going to have the most direct sun. The sun is going to be at the zenith on that day. Now you notice here in this picture that the summertime sun is much higher in the sky, very much higher angle of insulation. You're going to have a much longer duration. It's out for about 15 hours in New York State. Also what's going to happen here is your temperature is going to be much warmer. The wintertime sun, much lower angle of insulation, much lower duration, and your temperature is going to be a little bit cooler. In this case, because we're looking at the noontime sun in both these cases, you're looking south. 
This is your diagram that's going to correspond with the sun's path for the four seasons in New York State. You have the winter sun, the spring sun, you have the summer sun, and you're also going to have the fall sun, which is the exact same path as the spring sun on March 21st. Let's start out with December 21st. You notice that the December 21st sun rises in the southeast, sets in the southwest. It's only going to be out for about nine hours, very short path of the sun, very low angle of insulation. You're going to have a situation where the altitude of the sun is going to be about 24 and a half degrees above the horizon. That noon sun is going to produce a very, very long shadow to the observer. Because the noon sun is in the southern sky, the shadow of the observer will always face north. Next is going to be the spring sun okay, and the fall sun, okay, the March 21st sun. You notice that one. That path rises exactly east, sets exactly west. What's going to happen here is the altitude of the sun is going to be about 48 degrees above the horizon. You're going to have a medium length shadow. You're going to have about 12 hours of daylight across the entire planet on this day. Okay, and what's going to happen here is that the fall sun and the, and the spring sun are going to take the exact same path. In this case, you're still going to have a southern noon sun. You have to look south for the noon sun. You're going to have a medium-sized shadow for the observer. Next is going to be the June sun. This is going to be the first day of summer in this case. Sunrise is in the northeast. Sun sets in the northwest. It's out for 15 hours. Altitude of that sun is about 71 and a half degrees. It's going to produce the shortest noontime shadow. Again, you are going to look south for the noon sun, and that means that your noon shadow will point north. A very long path of the sun on this day. That's why you have the, it's considered the longest day of the year because the sun is going to be out for approximately 15 hours. Now we mentioned that the zenith is a very important point where the sun is going to hit. And we had already stated about what the latitude is going to be on the days in which the zenith is going to be hit. So here's a, quick, a couple uh, quick diagrams that show you the Tropic of Cancer, in this case 23 and a half degrees north, on June 21st, the zenith will be hit with the sun. During our winter time, it's the southern hemisphere summertime, you'll notice that this is the Tropic of Capricorn. The sun is still rising east and it's still going to set west, but in this case it's going to rise in the southeast, it's going to set in the southwest, okay, which is, corresponds with the southern hemisphere. Because it's our winter, it's going to be their summer. This is the day and the latitude in which the sun is going to reach the zenith. We also have the equator. This is going to take place on March 21st and September 23rd. The sun is going to rise exactly east and set exactly west, and the sun is going to hit the zenith on this day. And then finally, we have our North Pole. I know it's North Pole because if you look at the altitude of Polaris, it's 90 degrees above you. This diagram actually shows you two paths of the sun, one along the horizon on March 21st and September 23rd, and then the elevated path of the sun okay, is going to be on June 21st. You notice the sun never sets because it's going to be out for 24 hours. So that's a classic example. You notice the sun is moving counterclockwise around the observer. Classic example of our North Pole. The next animation I'm going to show you is about shadows. Now, one thing I want you to notice is the path of all four seasons of the sun. And what I want you to notice is what happens to the shadow length at sunrise, to noon, to sunset. I want you to notice that the sun is in the southern sky at noontime, which means that the noontime shadow is going to be pointing north. So I'm going to say thank you very much for your time. Good luck on your exam. We'll come back with a couple more podcasts in a little bit, but enjoy the animation.